Imagine that you are 18 years old and a high school student in their senior year. Every day, you go to class, and when you get home, there's food on the table. You spend time with your parents, you meet your friends, you might even have a boyfriend or girlfriend. Life is good. Life is happy. Tomorrow, your day is equally as comfortable. Your routine is my routine. We wake, brush our teeth, shower, take a, ride to, take a bus ride to school, and see, see your friends. Every day, we have a roof to sleep under, food on the table, and caring parents. We both, you and I, have the luxury of living a happy and steady life. As a senior, you've reached your graduation. There's much happiness and laughter fills the air, and you can hear all the camera shutters clicking all the time. As you ask yourself, what will change in my life? You have heard that college is fun, and that it is a place to develop yourself and pro propel yourself to a professional life and a successful career. More than anything, you believe that any individual that is ambitious and committed enough can make an impact in the world larger than themselves. Turns out, college <laughs> is fun. Um, it is really fun. I shouldn't say this, but yeah, it's fun. Uh, and you find yourself studying something that you really, really love. And it makes you come alive. As you graduate, you look back into the past four years, and you feel proud of your accomplishments. And a bit of a roller coaster ride, in that same thought process, you ask yourself again, what will change in my life? What you do know for sure is that your ambition to succeed is as large as your student loans. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where our stories diverge. You see, I'm from Puerto Rico, and although we may have some similar similarities, you and I, I'm coming back home to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, although a US territory, we lack behind when it comes to opportunities behind countries that just recently gave up dictatorial regimes. Let me put this in perspective. perspective. Everyone that's behind the second row, please stand up. Give each other a hug, give each other a, a handshake, get to know each other, be happy. <laughs> awesome. I'm gonna let you guys all into a little, little secret about Puerto Rico. If you were in my island, nine out of 10 of you, all of you guys who are standing up will be unemployed or underemployed. Everyone that's sitting in the two rows up front will have the opportunity to pursue their dreams. You can sit down now. So what am I trying to say? Is that my desires to succeed, my ambition just vanishes in front of my eyes because the society that surrounds me does not and cannot support and demand the knowledge and the skills that I have to offer. But I am ambitious. I am committed. And I will not accept this fate for me or my fellow Puerto Ricans. I have decided to do something bigger than myself. And I'm going to save my country. And I think I know how. Did you know that since 1976, virtually every single job in the United States was created by a startup company? And that 51% of the billion dollar unicorns like Google were founded by immigrants, just like me. Do you see where I'm going here? I'm almost sure you guys know where I'm going here. I am going to save my country by starting a cultural revolution. One that does not believe in sit-ins or protests, but is interested 
in hackathons, startup weekends, and inspiring the next generation of leaders with an entrepreneurial spirit, a spirit that allows them to create and capture extraordinary value. But how do you do this? Well, every single country's most valuable asset is its human capital. India, in the 1970s, turned a huge cornerstone, cornerstone when they saw the massive population not as a burden, but as an opportunity. Companies like Infosys sprouted off because of the shift in attitude. I see the world the same way. And I believe it is because I was able to attend my university in Boston of Babson College, where I was able to surround myself with hundreds of entrepreneurs and second generation doers that empowered and worked together with other people to create a positive impact in their country. But how did they do it? First off, policy. Puerto Rico has enacted legislature that allows any young entrepreneur to get a tax exemption on their first $40,000 in salary, as long as they are between the ages of 16 and 26 and working at a startup. And startups, they are offered discounted rates on their annual revenues as long as they do not, do not exceed half a million dollars. Other policies are bringing waves of investors and innovators and entrepreneurs to the island with the promise of a 4% corporate tax and other bundled breaks. We're expected to see $10 billion of investments in Puerto Rico by the end of next year. Talk about empowering human capital. That is almost 14% of our island's national public debt, equivalent to 72 billion. Now, you may think that our table is set, but the reality is we don't have enough entrepreneurs. We don't have entrepreneurs to take advantage of. And this is where I come in. This is where I try to change the world. Because at the end, we need to empower them. We need to get them working together. Puerto Ricans, they sadly dream, there are few Puerto Ricans that dream the same dreams and the magnitude that a Steve Jobs or an Elon Musk did. But don't get me wrong, it's not that we're uneducated. On the contrary, we rank top amongst other countries when it comes to accessibility to trained scientists and engineers. It simply hasn't clicked yet that we can tap into our own base and create our own future by being more daring by being more ambitious, and by seeing risk and seeing entrepreneurship as something that a career deserves, a career that is viable. But you may ask, this is not enough. Policy markets and the trained workforce that I spoke of, it is not enough. We need to do something that allows them to see risk as something that is admir admirable, something that is desirable, and something that is a Puerto Rican value. And that is where I step in. For the past couple of months, I've been building a support network with our era, era's brightest minds and visionaries, people and young entrepreneurs between the ages of 16, 25, and 21 that I have been coming down to the island, and we've been inviting them to come to the island to start up, scale up, and most importantly, serve as mentors. Right now, they are working with, the, with these startups from the local community. And I get emotional talking about this, because in the past couple of months, more than 40 startups have been launched or pivoted to take on new challenges. And that question of what will change in my life, I hope that it changes in the future. Because to be honest, human capital and culture are really important. You only need to be a little bit more ambitious to get them to click and start a 
Cultural Revolution. Without further ado, I hope that our stories converge once again. And although that is not my purpose, I just wish to see my friends and my fellow Puerto Ricans and sometimes my children not going through the same soul-crushing frustration that nine out of 10 young, educated, and ambitious Puerto Ricans go through. Perhaps in my country, the question will shift from what will change in my life to what can I change in my lifetime? Thank you.